So we will get started shortly. And I wanna thank you for joining me today. We're just gonna take a couple more minutes in case anybody else comes on. It gives me a chance to have some water. Okay, welcome everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started with today's webinar. I want to thank you so much for joining me here today. And this webinar is all about self-care coaching for empaths, using your core values as your guide. Now, I would love to know if you identify as an empath, as a highly sensitive person. If you do, I'm going to encourage you to use the Q&A uh, option. So you should see a little Q&A uh, piece at the bottom of your screen where you can answer any questions that I ask if you'd like to participate. So that first question is, do you consider yourself an empath or a highly sensitive person? And I'm starting to see some responses come in. Yes, yes, I do. Okay, great. So it looks like the right people have joined me here today because this session is really about you and ensuring that you see your empathic, see your sensitivity as the superpower it is and that you are grounded and rooted when it comes to utilizing your superpower in your everyday life, in, in guiding you and creating the vision for your life that I know you have. So to begin with, I would love for us to situate ourselves. And one of the ways that I like to do this is with a grounding exercise. So I'm gonna ask you to turn off any other distractions. If you have another, uh, window open. I'm going to ask you to close it. If your phone is next to you, maybe turn it upside down, put it on airplane mode, maybe set it aside because this session is about you and it's about you investing the time in yourself to get familiar with who you are, what your needs are, what your core values are, and how we can really stay centered and grounded and focused manifesting that vision that you have. So putting all distractions aside, and then I'm gonna invite you to place both feet on the ground if that's possible for you. Some of you may feel more comfortable kneeling, sitting cross-legged. For others, maybe putting your feet on the ground isn't an option, but I'd encourage you to take a position with your body that feels comfortable and safe. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite you to consider grounding with me using the five, four, three, two, one grounding technique. This is a technique that I use almost daily in my life. And it's a technique that a lot of my clients utilize as well to help them overcome those feelings of anxiety or overwhelm that we can find ourselves in. It's also a really beautiful way of bringing ourselves into the present moment. And so giving ourselves this gift of grounding using this technique can be helpful. And this is a tool that you can utilize any point, whenever you need it, whenever you would like to. So again, getting your body into a comfortable position, I'm actually gonna place my palms face down on my thighs. And I find that this can be grounding and helpful for me. Your hands might feel more comfortable in a different position. So what this technique is, is it's a way for us to tune in to our current surroundings and to situate and ground ourselves in the present moment. And it works like this. I'm gonna prompt you with questions and the questions will be, what are five things you can see? What are five thing, four things you can touch? What are three things you can hear? Two things you can smell? And what is one thing you can taste? So we're gonna walk through it. It doesn't go that quickly. <laughs> so again, finding that comfortable position with your body, taking a moment here, and then asking ourselves, what are five things I can see? Taking some time to look around and notice. What are four things I can touch? What are three things I can hear? What 
What are two things I can smell? And what is one thing I can taste? What I love about this exercise is now we have the opportunity to notice how we feel. And I don't know what your experience is, but I feel calmer. I feel more centered, more aligned. And I don't know if you've noticed, but my voice has dropped a bit. I'm talking a little slower. I've actually stepped into the present moment to be with you here and now. And hopefully you're feeling a shift in sensation in your own system. And if you are, that's wonderful. But also know that if you aren't, that's okay too. Each one of us will have our own experience with this practice. And I do say that it's a practice that takes consistently bringing this technique to the forefront, bringing this practice into your life and seeing how it shifts things for you. I recommend this technique anytime you have a feeling of anxiety or overwhelm, if you're feeling stressed, or if you're feeling like you're coming out of center. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Heather Evans. I am a self-care and personal empowerment coach. I work with clients around the world, and my path to becoming a coach was more than a little windy. <laughs> I, um, Coming out of my undergrad degree, I wanted to be a professional dancer. I had moved to Chicago. I was dancing for two different companies, and I was working for nonprofits in the city. And at a certain point, dancing became overwhelming for my system. I was consistently checking out of my body. I remember um, at the time I was in the throes of an eating disorder and I was consistently checking out of my system because being in that environment was way too overwhelming for me. It was anxiety inducing. I was feeling a lot of overwhelm, things that I had actually been suffering from from when I was young, when I was told that I was too much, I was too sensitive, I was too, too everything for the people in my life. And I was finding that when I was dancing and working and had no personal life, no time for myself, I was really overwhelmed. I was doing a lot of things for a lot of other people and doing nothing for myself. I quit dancing and I took up yoga and I also decided to go for my graduate degree. So I replaced one thing of doing with another thing of doing because to be honest, it was too scary to be with myself. I was terrified of sitting with my own sensations in my own body and being challenged with the truth of what was really happening. And the truth of what was really happening is that I was out of alignment with what I was really feeling inside. Every fiber of my being was saying, this isn't the right path. And yet I kept pushing through because I had other people telling me that that's what I should be doing. I should be dancing. I should be going to grad school. I should be working these jobs because Heather, you're good at it. And I don't know if this is familiar to anybody else. If it is, let me know in the Q and A, just give me a yes. If you have been, yes, I'm seeing a couple of yeses here. So some people were telling me, this is what you're good at. You should keep doing this. And at the same time, my entire body was going into overwhelm because it wasn't aligned with the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am is that I am sensitive. I am an empath. And as a result of that, I was taking on other people's stuff day after day. So I got my grad degree. I'm working this nonprofit job. In the meantime, I had met my now husband. We had a long distance marriage for a long time because I was working and I was traveling 90% of the time. And after about three and a half years of working that particular position, work that I loved doing, my system gave out. I was on the verge of a massive burnout. And I was on the verge of a burnout because I wasn't listening to what my body was asking for. I wasn't paying attention to the signs. I wasn't paying attention to the fact that I was exhausted all the time. That because I was traveling all the time, I would wake up in hotel rooms and not have any idea what the time zone was. My circadian rhythm was off. 
I wasn't eating well. I wasn't sleeping well. I didn't have time for self-care. I was literally burning the candle at both ends because the external validation telling me that I was good at the things I was doing was feeding me. It was nourishing me. It was telling me, this is your path forward. Instead of me sitting with myself going, what is my path forward? What is it that I really want to align myself with as I move forward and grow and shift and change as a human being? So when I was on the verge of burnout, I decided to leave that position, which was heartbreaking for me because again, I love the work I was doing. I was the national diversity and inclusion manager for a, one of the largest nonprofits in the United States. And I decided to leave that position and move to Canada to be with my spouse. And let me tell you something. I had a mentor at the time who told me, this is going to be a hardship for you because now Heather has to get to know Heather. I'd love to know from you, have you taken the time to sit with yourself? Or are you letting other people's ideas about what your path should be drive you and motivate you? Are you letting that external validation fill you up? Because if you are, I'm telling you, you are not alone. I, <laughs> yes, I'm Martha. Yes, I see. I see. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yes, somebody just wrote, the external validation is almost like an addiction. It's hard to know. It's hard to know your worth unless you're being told it from someone else. Yeah, that's, that is truth talk right there. Thank you for sharing that. We are living in cultures that thrive on the number of likes you get, the number of views you get, the number of people who sign up for a webinar. Yeah. <laughs> we are living in a culture where performance reviews outweigh how the person is reviewing themselves in terms of their own well-being. And let me tell you something, if you identify as an empath, as a highly sensitive person, this culture can become toxic, toxic. And it's not a surprise to me that the clients I work with on a daily basis are people who are empathic, who are highly sensitive. And as a result of this overwhelm, as a result of needing the external validation, their systems are shorting out and they're distracting. And by the way, all of us distract, it's a human thing. But what we need to pay attention to is if the distraction is because we're actually overwhelmed, if we're anxious, if we just don't wanna deal with what's happening inside. And by the way, I've been there too. I've been in that space of not wanting to meet myself. It's okay to be an empath for other people, but to be an empath for myself, whoo, hang on just a second. I've been there. I've been there. It's a scary thought. It's much easier to tune into everybody else's needs than it is to tune into mine. It's much easier to be there for everybody else around me, the work, the people, and not be there for myself. That's a form of distraction. Just like Netflix is a distraction, your social media feed is a distraction, right? Taking care of other people's stuff, that's a distraction. And I'm not saying that we don't show up for the people in our lives. I'm not suggesting that because you as an empath, you as a highly sensitive person, that is one of your greatest gifts. But if you're doing it at the expense of yourself, that's where the tension arrives. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. This whole session is about how you can self-coach in any situation using your core values as your guide. So if you received the email reminding you about the session, you should have seen a link where you can download a core values worksheet. If you didn't get a chance to download it before the session, don't worry about it. You can just take out a piece of paper, open up a notes thing or a Word document or a pages document on your device or your laptop, no worries. You can take some notes there. Because I'll tell you something, the one thing, the key that I have seen for the empaths and the highly sensitive people that I work with, that I coach, that invite me onto their journeys of healing and self-empowerment is core values. When we are empaths, if we're highly sensitive, 
We have this amazing ability to tune into other people, to understand the energy that's happening in a room. And if you're an empath or a highly sensitive person, you know what I'm talking about. You can pick up on other people's emotional states very, very quickly. And sometimes other people's emotional states can start guiding how you react and how you respond. I was working with a client the other day. She's an empath through and through. Self-identified, she recognizes this. And what we were looking at when in our work together is how since she was a young child, her empathic abilities meant that she was navigating her entire space based on how other people were feeling. Because she was so tuned in without having context or container for being tuned in, she was constantly in a state of reaction, which meant her system was consistently in a state of fight or flight. Her nervous system has been operating at such a high level. Her sympathetic nervous system is always on alert. And for empaths and highly sensitive people, I see this as a theme. Our sympathetic nervous system, that one that is on alert and ready to move into action, goes into overdrive. Because we're consistently being bombarded by other people's energy, emotional states, feeling states. And by the way, empaths and highly sensitive people, we all have our different ways of seeing and being. What can ground us, what can bring us back to center is our core values. If you know your core values, all of a sudden, you've got a list of things that you can run everything past. Are these people okay and safe for me to be around? Is this situation a safe one for me to be in? Is this job, this project, a good fit for me? Are these things enabling me to feel the way I want to feel every day? And by the way, if we're feeling the way we want to feel every day, your empathic superpower can flourish. You can actually be in service to yourself and to others because we don't want to erase your superpower. I don't want to take that away. What we want to do is we want to be able to harness it and cultivate it and give it space to breathe and be with you as you do your work, as you are in relationship with others, right? So that's why the core values are so important. So we're going to walk through the core values uh, approach that I take with my clients. This is something that I also do myself. And I do this about four times a year. I find that it's really helpful to revisit my core values because here's the other thing. Your core values, they might shift and change over time. You go through different life stages. You're motivated by different things at different times in your life. I was sharing with somebody the other day, my core values at 20 are very different from where my core values are now at 41 with a son and a spouse, right? I'm in a different place in my life. So it's important that we revisit these. These aren't just something that we do as kind of an exercise and then we put them to the side and yeah, I have my core values somewhere. It really is an essential ingredient to you showing up in your superpower as an empath, as a highly sensitive person, because we need you. So here we go. Have your piece of paper, have your pages doc up, have your word doc up. Let me know if you have any questions as we go through this process. And let's get started. So the first part of this process, I would like you to make a list of the things that are important to you. So these are things or people or activities that if you could do them every day for the rest of your life, you would do them. So part of my things that I love to do every day are being outside. I've got to spend some time outside every day. It's an essential ingredient to me feeling good. So you're going to, you might write down being outside every day, connecting with nature. One of my clients, one of the things that she loves to do the most is connect socially with friends. So that made her list. She loves to go out and have a glass of wine and chat with her friends. That's, that's something that she absolutely loves. So Awesome, that made her list. 
And I'd love to know what's making your list. So as you write down, start coming up with these ideas, let me know by sharing it either in the Q&A or in the comments or the chat, whatever you have available to you, let me know what's going on. Let me know what's making your list. Oh, somebody just put spending time with my daughter. Yes, love that. Another person wrote going for a run. Uh-huh, yes. With, oh, nice. thank you for putting this. Somebody else just put figuring out how to solve problems in Excel for other people. Yeah, write that down. I love Excel, by the way. Yes, love that that made your list. So good. <laughs> what else do we have here? Keep sharing. This is great. Oh, baking in the kitchen. I love that. Yes. Yep. What else do we have? Oh, learning how to play the guitar, so cool. Yes, everybody, I love what you're writing in. So keep making your list. By the way, your list is never done. You can always add to it. So hopefully you have about five to 10 things on your list at this point. If you don't, Let's get it to at least five. So keep thinking about this one, but we're gonna move on to the next phase. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at the things you wrote down, the things that you love to do, the things that you're most interested in. And then I'd like you to think about how these things make you feel inside. And if possible, you can even put yourself there, yeah? So if I think about being outside and connecting with nature, and I put myself there, I feel strong. I feel independent. Yeah, those are, the, those are the sensations that come up in my body. I feel excited. One of the things that I love to do is spend quality time with my son. He's almost two right now. And that makes me feel, he's so grounding for me. So I feel grounded. I feel really connected. I feel needed when I'm around him which is a really nice feeling to have. So you're gonna take that list of things that you are interested in, that are exciting to you, and then you're going to write down how do these things make you feel. So once you've got a couple, if you wanna share any in the comments, feel free to do so. Okay, I've got a creative, yes. Oh, I've got a free coming in, mm-hmm, strong. Yes, empowered, yes, light, yes, joyous, ooh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, feeling steady, aligned, nice, thank you. Mm-hmm, yes, the, yes, everybody, uh-huh, centered, focused, excited. Yes, everyone. Oh, so good. So we're starting, we're starting the process of coming into our core values. And thank you everyone for sharing. That's fantastic. It's so good. Because what, what we're starting to do is we're starting to create a vibration in the system. We're starting to create a resonance of where we want to be every day. So we've got our list of things that we love to do. Thank you for sharing some of yours. Then we've got the next list of, okay, this is how these things make me feel. Here's where it gets really exciting. Here's where your core values begin to emerge. You're going to take these two lists and you're actually going to go through the process and you're going to go, okay, when I bring these two lists together, that's my core value. That's the word for that. Because you might start to see themes between these two lists. I have a client that I recently walked through this exercise with, and she's actually in the process of looking uh, for a new career path. Um, she's in a position right now. It served her well over the past couple of years, but she's ready to move on. And so what we, what we needed to do was revisit her core values to see, okay, what's gonna be an alignment with your core values as they stand right now. So we went through the list of the things that light her up and we narrowed it down to her work specifically. And then we looked at how do these things make her feel. And when she created her core values list, I just wanna share a couple of things that she came up with. 
She felt strong. She felt empowered. She felt recognized, supported, and she felt creative. Those were the things, those were the core values that she distilled her feelings and the things that interested her about her work into her core values list. So her core values ended up being strength, creativity, right? Empowered. What, what we then did is we looked at these other career options that are becoming available to you or to her and we said, okay, does this particular position, does this company culture, do these things give you those core values in your life or do they take away from them? Does this position, does this company culture allow you to be creative? Does this company culture, does this position make you feel when you read about, does it make you feel strong and empowered? Is it aligned with your vision? Will this help you bring in more focus into your life? So we had her list of core values and then we ran the positions and the company culture past her list of core values. Guess what? If it checked off a majority of her core values, she was like, yeah, I'm applying for that one. And there were a couple on her list where we went through the core values and she's like, actually, no, it's not aligning. Maybe I shouldn't apply. It's magic. This can happen in relationships too. Worked with another client recently. She was in a long-term relationship and it ended, unfortunately. But the two of them kept continuing a conversation. And I said, okay, this relationship is serving you in some way. What core values is this relationship fulfilling in your life? And you know what? We went through her list of core values and we realized it was checking off all of these boxes off our core values list. By the way, your core values list, five to 10, no less than five, no more than 10. Don't want to get overwhelmed. And what she realized is she actually wants to continue the relationship with this individual. And because they're now having all of these conversations, she feels more aligned with her core values. She feels more rooted and grounded in herself. By the way, there's a lot of other stuff that gets excavated in that process. Yeah. Old relationships, family patterns, right? But when it came to her core values, she realized, oh, this relationship, this person, being in this relationship with this person is actually in alignment with my core values. It's not taking away. And when I'm out of relationship with this individual, that's when I feel like some of these core values are missing. Not that her core values are dependent on that individual, but she recognizes the relationships that are in alignment with her core values. Really important. Because there are going to be some relationships as an empath or a highly sensitive person. You might go into a relationship with someone. You might take on a project. You might go and, uh, and take on a job. You might participate in an activity and it is not checking any of your core values boxes. You gotta be asking yourself, why are we doing this then? Whose script are you reading? What external validation are you seeking? Because let me tell you something, when we're truly aligned with our core values, things flow, there's an ease. When I'm living aligned with my core values, I'm surrounding myself with the people who are bringing more of that into my life. I'm taking on the projects and working with the people who are aligned with my core values. All of a sudden, my anxiety levels go down. My overwhelm goes down. I can feel an energy shift. Energetically, I am in alignment with my truth. I'd love to know if you are starting that process of condensing what a couple of your core values are, share them with me. And just so you know, I want to share my top three core values with you. My top three core values are self-care, got to be taking care of myself. I have another core value of deep connection. And then my third core value is being in service. Those are my top three. I have a list of 10, but those are my so guess what? Everything I do has to be checking those three boxes. This webinar offering this checks all three boxes. It checks a box of self-care because I light up 
when I'm in connection with people, when I'm sharing things with people. It offers deep connection because I have the opportunity to connect with you. And, and I don't take that lightly. You truly did invite me onto part of your journey. And, and that means something to me. That is part of connecting deeply with people. And it enables me to be in service, I hope, in some way, shape, or form to support you manifesting the vision you have for your life, for living more in alignment with your core values. Okay, I'm starting to see some core values come in. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm just reading. <laughs> So some of the core values I'm seeing are resonant time with family, which is a gorgeous way of putting that, by the way. Thank you, whoever. Yes. Mm, love that. Resonant time with family. Uh-huh. Remembering I'm nature. Yes. So anything that you do has to be, yep, you've got to check in and make sure, is this aligning with that? You see another core value of driven, nice. So a question on driven, is that a feeling something gives you or is that an actual core value? So I'd like you to distill a little bit more for me what driven means because driven is more a feeling or a sensation perhaps. And, and this might not be the case for you, but core value should be almost like what is it that gives you that driven, that driven feeling or that driven sensation? Okay, being challenged, yes. Okay, one of your core values might be growth, growth through challenge. That might be a core value, yeah, where you look for those opportunities or those relationships that are going to push edges or invite you to grow in bigger ways. Somebody wrote expansion. That's a great core value. Is this enabling me to expand? Ooh, thank you to the person who wrote stability. I appreciate you. Such a great core value. Yes, yeah, so many of us, especially as empaths, as highly sensitive people, grounded stability, that's a huge one. So I really appreciate that you shared that. Okay, somebody just wrote communication. Okay, talk to me more about communication. Is it clear communication? Is it deep communication? Can we, can we put a qualifier on that? Because is it open communication, expansive communication? What kind of communication is your core value? Is it, it, communication's a good one. I just wanna know a little bit more, just a little bit more. Okay, somebody wrote, oh, somebody wrote recognition as a core value. Thank you. Thank you for putting that down. Because some people, that, that is one of your drivers, is being recognized, is knowing that you've contributed, that you are significant in some way. Yeah, that you, I, I, this is so great. I have another client who has something very similar in the in same vein as recognition. And she knows that one of her core values and something that's really important to her is that she's thanked, that she's recognized for the things that she's done for other people huge. Great. Awesome. Okay. What else do we have? Giving back is a core value. Yes. So are the activities you're participating in, is the work that you're doing enabling you to live that core value of giving back on a daily basis? Awesome. So continue excavating this. Continue the process of discernment with this. Feel into your list, the things that you love to do, the way it makes you feel, and then distilling the core values from there. And then what I want you to do with that list of five to 10 core values, I want you to write them in order of importance to you. Because here's the thing, I want you to be living your top three core values every single day. Every single day. Oh, let's come back to communication. Uh, Okay, communication, thank you. Deep, meaningful, honest, personal, to be understood, open and honest, yes. Yes, I love it. So that's it. Now, now you're starting to distill and get down to it, right? So good. So yeah, we want to be in relationships. We want to be doing work. We want to be doing activities that foster that core value of deep, meaningful, honest communication. And if that's not happening, 
we get to assess. Let me tell you something. When we start living our life from our core values, the yeses and nos start becoming very clear. You get to ask yourself, is this going to enable me to live my core values? If the answer is no, you've got a choice to make. If the answer is yes, maybe you move forward with it. And this is part of how you can coach yourself. This is part of the self-coaching methodology. This is part of how we as empaths and highly sensitive people remain grounded, aligned, and centered, showing up for ourselves and therefore being able to show up for others. This isn't about putting up walls and barriers. This is about saying, I need to be aligned so I can expand. I need to be centered and grounded so I can show up for you. And yes, we're still going to be tapping into other people's energy, other people's emotions, other people's flow, but we can do it from a place that leaves us feeling stable in our truth instead of aligned with everybody else's story, aligned with everybody else's emotional state. Because when we're that, that's when we go into overwhelm. That's when we go, in, oh, go into anxiety. That's when we start distracting with everybody else's stuff. Because if we keep distracting, then we don't have to check in with the fact that I'm living out of alignment. And if I'm living out of alignment, then, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for sharing what you did. Because this is the truth of being an empath and a highly sensitive person. It's and I'm saying this from experience and saying this as one, it's easy to get knocked off balance because there's a theme with empaths and highly sensitive people where we want to make sure that everybody else is okay. That is something to be admired, but you have to harness your superpower. You have to do it from a grounded place. If you can take care of people and take care of yourself from that centered, aligned, in your truth place, if you can take care of your stuff from that place, ooh, that's where the magic starts to happen. Then we're not serving from a place of depletion. Then we're not serving from a place of desperation. Then we're not serving because we're desperate for something to distract us. Instead, we're serving and we're tuning in to other people because it's our gift and it's what makes us unique. And this world needs what you have to offer. This world needs empaths and highly sensitive people to be tuning in. But you've got to be doing it from a grounded place. So how do the core values tune into self-coaching? I have a methodology that I like to share with people. And, you know, I have people who ask me, Heather, you're a coach. Why are you training people or teaching people how to coach themselves? Well, because I'm an empowerment coach and you have all of the resources you need to coach yourself. It's true. You can do it. I do it. I use this method. My clients use this method, right? It's just, we also need support. And that's where a coach, a therapist, a counselor, a guide can come in. So here's the, here's the self-coaching method. Here's how it unfolds. And you may want to have a piece of paper nearby or, again, a document open on your laptop or your phone, however you're watching this. So here's how it works. It's called TRACE. T-R-A-C-E. TRACE. It's a TRACE self-coaching method that I've, that I've created after working with people from around the world and working with myself. So here's, here's what happens. We have a thought. This is T, a thought, a feeling, a sensation. And it happens in reaction to something we see or it's anticipatory. So sometimes it's not in reaction. Sometimes it's before something has happened or before we meet someone. So we want to notice that. That's the first step. We want to notice this thought, this feeling, the sensation that we're having. You might feel it physically in your body. It might be a thought that happens mentally. You might have something happen energetically or in a feeling state. It's going to be different for everyone. So one of the things about this first step is also understanding how your body situates itself and reacts to input. 
I know for myself, I'm very much an embodied person. And so I have to tune into the sensation in my body. My body never lies to me. So my thought is actually sensation or feeling in my body, in my system, in my energy field. So that's the first step. We've got a thought that happens. The second step is R, it's reflection. So the next step is a critical piece because this is where we get to discern, is this my reaction or is this someone else's? Now for empaths and highly sensitive people, step number two, this reflection piece is essential. Can we discern if the thought, feeling, sensation we're having is our own or is it coming from somewhere else? Is it truth? Or is it story? Is it that person across the room? Or is it truly how I'm feeling inside? And that takes practice. And there are ways that we can start to inhabit our body. One way is do the five, four, three, two, one check-in method and actually tune in, okay, is this mine? Or does this belong to someone else? So that second step reflection is about determining if this is truly yours, if this is your truth, or if it's somebody else's truth or story. Then what we do is we go to alignment. This is A. And we say to ourselves, okay, is this sensation, thought, feeling aligned with my core values? Is what I'm feeling right now in alignment with my core values? Is it making me feel excited? Is it enabling me to connect and communicate on a deep, meaningful level? Yeah? Am I feeling empowered? Is this fostering my ability to care for myself? So we ask ourselves, okay, I've had this thought, feeling, sensation. Is this mine? Is this somebody else's? And is this aligned with my core values? If the thought, feeling, or sensation is a yes, it's aligned with my core values, it's checking boxes, and I know, I know that the reason that I'm having this feeling, thought, or sensation is because it's aligned. Then we move forward with whatever it is that's happening. We move forward in the relationship. We move forward with the job. We do the activity. We spend time in that space or that situation. If it's not aligned, if it's not inviting more of your core values into your life, you have a choice to make. That's C, choice. You have a choice to move forward or not. C could also stand for control. One thing that's really essential for those of us who are empaths, highly sensitive people to remember, and sometimes we need to hear it to remember it, is that we are in control. We get to decide what a yes is, what a no is. We get to decide what direction we move in in our life. It's not up to anyone else, it's up to us. And if you're living your core values, if you're aligned in your truth, you making that choice will be much clearer. As I said before, when you are living your core values every day, particularly your top three, your yeses become easier, your noes become easier. And then because you've made a choice one way or another, by the way, I support whatever choices people make because it means you're in control. Because you've made a choice to say yes or say no, and by the way, sometimes the choice is, I don't know, so we hit pause. But even recognizing the I don't know is empowering. Because we've gone through this process, the final stage is E. That's evolution. You have evolved as a result of moving through the steps in this self-coaching. And the self-coaching, as you can see, the core values are literally right at the center of it. I had a client that I was working with and she takes public transportation and she would show up for our sessions and I could tell if she had been practicing self-coaching aligned with her core values or if that wasn't part of her practice. And by the way, this is a practice, self-coaching, your core values, living them every day, it's a practice. You have to put it into practice to start feeling the difference, to see the shifts. But I could tell, okay, have we been practicing self-coaching? Because on the days where, or yeah, the, the days where she would come in where the practice had sort of fallen off, 
She would come in and I could feel her energy system was out of alignment. She had just been on public transportation. Some days she had just come from work or working on a project. And I could tell she wasn't centered or grounded in herself. She was with everybody else. The weeks where she had been practicing self-coaching, where she had grounded herself in her core values, she would show up and she was ready to go. Despite the fact that she had just been on public transportation, surrounded by everyone else. It is incredible the difference that actually practicing this makes. And for empaths, for highly sensitive people, this can be the difference between living everybody else's life or living your own. And I say that because I've seen it. The moment I got clear on my core values was the moment I started living in flow with my truth. I stopped doing the things that weren't lighting me up or bringing me joy. Now, what I want to add here, and this, this is the challenging part because it's not all rainbows and starshine. I want to be clear about this. When we start living our core values, when you start saying yes to certain things and no to other things, there's going to be some challenges. Because what you're effectively doing is creating healthy boundaries for yourself and you're protecting your energy. And when you do that, people, other people in your life might not be used to that. They might not be used to you being clear about your truth because they're used to you being in step with theirs. That's the honest part about this. And that's where having a support system can come in handy. Having friends that identify and honor your sensitivity, who can say, yes, you're living aligned with your core values and that's amazing, I support you. Having coaches, having guides, having therapists, having counselors, people who can support you as you begin the process of living your truth. These support systems, and I'm a coach, I'm a highly sensitive person, I'm an empath. I have my team of people. <laughs> I have an accountability partner that I can go to. I have friends who honor my sensitivity. I have a mentor that I call on a regular basis. I've worked with coaches. I've worked with therapists in the past to get clear and to ensure that I have the support that I need to continue showing up and doing my work. So I want to make sure that you have the support that you need. And you get to decide what that support looks like. If you're interested at all in having a conversation with me about support, that can happen. And I'm going to be sending you an email tomorrow. You can sign up for a free empowerment session with me. It's one hour. It's you and me talking about your superpower and how you can actually harness your core values to start living aligned with your truth. So that's one way. Because I want to make sure that you have the support you need. Again, one of my core values is being in service. I am here to support empaths and highly sensitive people on their path to living their truth. That is why I do what I do. It's why I'm talking so passionately about living your core values. It's why I want you to coach yourself. It's why I'm encouraging you to get the support you need. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that when we live in alignment with our core values, it's going to impact every area of your life. Everything from how you identify yourself, to how you think about money, to how you think about your career, to how you work in relationships with other people, to how you begin to process and show up with your emotions. And because of that, I wanted to let you know that I've also created a membership program. It's called the Inner Fire Membership Program. And membership fees are based on your access to resources. So there are three different price points. I hate using that word, but it's the one that I just downloaded. <laughs> there are three different tiers of monthly membership fees that you can subscribe to depending on your access to resources. So what I'm going to do right now is in the chat, hopefully you can see the chat, and if you can't, I'm gonna make sure that I um, include all of this information in the email that's going to go out tomorrow. But here is the Inner Fire membership program. Here's the link for that. And then if you wanted to book that one-on-one -on -one session, 
I'm going to include the link for that as well. Now, I understand that this is a busy time of year. Highly aware of that. It's the festive season for many people, not everyone. Um, but, you know, this is also a time of year where as empaths, as highly sensitive people, because of how much is going on, it can be even easier to be out of alignment. So sign up for a session. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation, you and me, having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue so that you are getting the support you need to live your core values, so that you are getting the support you need to practice self-coaching. It's so important. It's vital to you thriving as an empath. It's vital to you sharing your gifts as a highly sensitive person because I honor and respect what you have to offer. This world needs empaths and highly sensitive people to be showing up now more than ever. We need you to be grounded. We need you to be aligned. Because if you can show up for yourself, that means we can show up for others. And when we can show up for others, it's such a gift to be able to offer somebody that space. Yeah? So I wanted to leave space for questions, whether it's about your core values or the self-coaching methodology, the membership program, anything you have questions about, you can pop them into the Q&A. And if there aren't any questions, I can also close it up. I know that people's time is incredibly valuable, so I, I also want to honor that. I want to make sure that I'm meeting everyone where they are. Okay, I have one question that came through. Let's see, what are the different Okay, yep, what are the different prices for the membership program? That's such a great question, thank you for asking. So first I wanna tell you what you would get with the membership program and then I'll break down the price point. So with the membership program, each month we do a deep dive into a particular topic, everything from your identity and how that relates to how you're going to approach self-care to like I said before, your money mindset, getting more done in less time, and how we can manage our time and energy more effectively and more efficiently as empaths and highly sensitive people. Um, we're going to be looking at our money mindset, looking at how we work in relationships with people. It is a program where we do deep dives on a monthly basis. And with that, you'll get a lecture and some self-reflection uh, pieces, but then you also get access to two group coaching calls per month. And those group coaching calls are an invitation for you to come onto the call and ask questions, to get coached in that group setting. So it's really exciting. And I'm reopening the registration for a January start. So in January, we're going to be doing the next iteration of the Inner Fire membership program. So if you're at all interested, now would be the time to sign up. So here's how the pricing works. Um, if you, I, I offer it this way. I ask you to do some self-reflection, and I, I want you to consider your access to resources, your privilege, and your social capital when you're looking at this. So if you have abundant access to resources, if that's where you decide you are, the cost of the membership program is $97 a month. That's in all prices are US. If you say, if you reflect on this and you say, okay, I have sufficient access to resources, your price at the monthly membership fee would be $67 per month. And then if you reflect and you say, okay, I have limited access to resources, then you would be at a price point of $47 per month. And you get the video, you get the self-reflection workbook, you get the two monthly coaching calls per month, and then there will be other additional things if you uh, stay with the program for six months and even more additional bonuses if you stay on for a year. And the idea is that you do stay on for a full year, that you are an Inner Fire membership program member for 12 months because each month we're doing a deep dive into a different area of your life. And I don't know if any of you practice yoga, but I like to think of it as when we stretch a muscle. So let's say this is one area of your life. This is a relationship area of your life. If I pull on this area, or if I do some work on this relationship part of my life, if you'll notice it's having an impact on the rest of my shirt, yeah? It's not just impacting this one area. If I come in and I'm focusing on my relationship, other areas of my life are going to shift and respond 
to the work that I'm doing in that part of my life. If I change jobs, things are going to shift and respond in different areas of my life. If I take on a project, if I do a different activity, all of these things have ripple effects. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are creating a space for a comprehensive look, a holistic look at the entire system. And on these coaching calls, you can ask about anything. It doesn't have to be related to that topic of the month because again, anything that we look at, it's going to have a ripple effect. I call it connecting the dots, right? You work on one little dot and automatically it's connecting to five others. How can it not? We're interconnected beings. So that's how the pricing works. I hope that that answered your question. So 97, 67, and 47 are the different membership, monthly membership fees that you would pay depending on your access to resources. And I've done that intentionally, and that's to make sure that coaching is as accessible as possible. Oh, and everything is online with that. I hope that was clear. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Ah, good one. What does a one-on-one -on -one empowerment session look like? Great question. So uh, what it looks like is I have a, a very quick and easy form that you fill out in order for me to help prepare myself for my time with you. And what we're going to look at is whatever's important to you right now in your life. We're going to look at what your current state is, where you'd like to move it, how you're feeling about it. I might have you do some breathing and some embodied work in that hour. And we'll just take time. Honestly, it's about you. And I've intentionally made that initial call an hour because I don't want us to get to 30 minutes and we're starting to get into the really exciting, juicy part of the conversation. And then I say, hey, time's up. That's not how it works. <laughs> I'm not that person. So I leave a bare, minimum of, a bare minimum of an hour for these calls. I'm very intentional and mindful about creating a space where we can excavate what's actually happening underneath the thing that you've just brought to the conversation. So I hope that that helps. Oh, and those conversations happen over the phone. I do sometimes offer them via Zoom, which is the platform that we're using for this webinar. So you can see me and I can see you, but that's only if you feel comfortable doing it that way. Otherwise it's over the phone. So I hope that that helps. Yeah. Where are you located and does coaching with you happen in person or online? Great question. So I live on Vancouver Island uh, in Canada. I live on the northern part of the island in a place called the Comox Valley. So if you happen to be in the Comox Valley, you can always sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I also offer workshops in the area, uh, which are more than welcome to join. I'm going to be updating my website soon with some of the upcoming work that's happening. Um, so you are more than welcome to join me in person for coaching. I work out of an office space. Um, and then, like I said, I, I do offer workshops and, and different events like that. Um, if you are not located on Vancouver Island or in the Comox Valley specifically, but you would like to work together, sessions can happen online. And I still do embodied work online. I'll still be asking you to breathe and feel into your system. I'll be asking you to maybe do some movement and to really tune into how the system is energetically reacting or anticipating the things that we're talking about. So I hope that that answers your question. Great question. By the way, I hope you all notice I'm not saying names on this webinar and I'm doing that intentionally. I want this to be a safe space for people. And I know that sometimes saying names can be um, a bit confronting or can uh, maybe make people feel a little bit vulnerable. So I've been trying to be mindful and intentional about not saying any names. And if I've said any, I do apologize. It's something that I try to be very conscious of. Um, on these webinars. Okay, I am not seeing any other questions, but what I would love is I'm going to be sending you a follow-up email tomorrow. It will include a link to watch a replay of this webinar. What I would love and what I'm going to ask you to do is once you've watched the replay, if that's something that you want to do, or once you've finished your core values list, I want you to share it with me. I want to know what your five to 10 core values are, and I want to know what they are in order. Because guess what? I would love to follow up with you in a little while and ask how you're doing living your core values every day. I really want to know. It's that important to me.
So I hope that this has been helpful. I want to thank you for taking the time to show up for yourself, to be present here, to invest this time in yourself. It means a lot to me, and I really appreciate all of the sharing that everyone did. Thank you so, so much. This is so great. And if anybody has any follow-up questions, you can always email me at heather at heatherevanscoaching.com. You'll also see that I included that link for my contact page on my website. So you can just email me directly from there. And I wish you all the best and enjoy the rest of your day. Stay aligned with your core values and stay ignited out there. I will see you soon. Bye everyone. Thank you so, so much. Take good care. Bye.